الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. Welcome everybody. My name is Bilal Abdul Kareem, and this is our weekly question and answer show. Now, um, got a couple of things we got to talk about here. Firstly, we are broadcasting live on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. This is number one. Number two, um, we are broadcasting from northern Syria. Uh, we didn't broadcast last week. I'm sorry about that. We just weren't able to get that done last week. There are all kinds of weather-related problems that we're having here in northern Syria. The reality of the situation is that it is below zero. Um, we had a snowstorm today. Yes, northern Syria, we had a snowstorm. Um, of course, it was a New York snowstorm, but it was enough to paralyze some of the cities here in the north um, northeastern uh, part of the uh, territory. Um, me, myself, I was not able to get to the office. I am broadcasting this from home, um, so it's a different feel. Uh, if you could see my house right here, um, my wife is sitting here, baby is drinking some milk, so you might hear some wank wank um, throughout the, the broadcast. But this is as good as this going to get um, for right now because um, there's just no way for me to get to the office. I hope the internet uh, uh, speed is good enough. Now that we've covered all of that stuff, let's get started with a few things. We're going to be talking about what's important to you, and um, let's see if we can answer some of these questions. Okay, let's take a look here. Um, let's get started here with Susa, who says, Salam alaikum, Yami uh, Bilal. Where have you been, Sheikh? Are you healthy? I'm good. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. I'm feeling strong. I'm feeling revved up and ready to go. Um, uh, like I say, we weren't able to come to you live last week, but we're here this week and we're, we're, we're raring to go. We've got some very special things that are uh, planned in the next couple of days. So inshallah ta'ala, stay tuned to OGN and you will be a part of that. Now, next. <clears throat> Tariq Al-Hashim says, how do you feel about ISIS freeing 800 prisoners from SDF prisons? Well, let me give this to you straight, okay, as best as um, I can possibly do it. Uh, regarding the uh, prison situation um, where there were uh, massive attacks on the SDF prisons where they house um, people who were uh, uh, accused of being a part of uh, or ISIS. And this person, Tariq Al Hashim, is asking me, how do I feel about that? Okay, well, we've got to talk about a couple of things. Number one, I am not a supporter of ISIS. I do not agree with their tactics, their methods. I think that they are murderers and they've killed countless um, Muslim men, women, and children. Um, I do believe that their Takfiri mentality ruined the Syrian revolution, and it ruined their organization. Now, after having said that, I want to be very fair and just. The SDF have had these people, men, women, and children, locked up for more than three years. And they have given them no real adequate opportunities to defend themselves, to prove their innocence, or what have you. Um, they're basically just lumped all together um, in, in, in uh, fake trials or no trial yet. After three years, we can't support that. That cannot be supported in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Indefinite detention is something that Islam does not condone. And everybody is innocent until they're proven guilty. And as the Prophet ﷺ said, the burden of proof is on the claimant. So it's upon the SDF to make their case and make their claim that these people, number one, were ISIS, two, they contributed to ISIS's war effort, and then number three, you're going to have to, see some nuance have to be understood here. Some of the people there were faced with choices. You've got the SDF militias that are coming to attack, and they could either stay at home, and in which case live under a Kurdish rule, which a lot of people were not for, or they could choose to fight. 
but some of them were not a part of ISIS's um, a, a core membership or, 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 or even their satellite membership. And that's the reality of the situation. So I know nobody wants to hear all of that. People want to hear cut and dried. Yes, ISIS, out. No, ISIS, not out. Okay, but how are we going to gauge who's who? They've got, they've got to be trials. And if you don't have proof against these people, you got to let them go. Simple as that. So in terms of the attacks on, on, on the prisons, look, when you're going to hold people and detain people indefinitely, you're going to spur other people on who are going to say, hey, you know what? We're not talking anymore. We're going to fight. That's just the reality of the situation. And Allah knows best. Um, let's see. Uh, Abdi Aziz Muhammad says, Salam alaikum, Bilal, wa alaikum, Salam. Tell us a good dream you had recently. Mm, I, mm, I don't have to think about that one at all. Got to think about that because I can't remember the dream that I had um, recently. Hmm. Let me think. Maybe I'll come back to you before the show is over if I can think of something. Next. AD83 Live says, Wikipedia says Huras Adin is active and present. Wikipedia says a lot of things. Um, yeah, Wikipedia is something that gets updated from time to time. Um, but uh, uh, Huras Adin um, is a group that is uh, currently inactive as a group, as individuals. There are still uh, some that are participating um, in different efforts, but as a group, Huras Adin has been neutralized by uh, Hayat Tahrir Isham. Now, All righty. Let's see what we have here. Okay. Uh, next. Inverdistani says, uh, Asalaamu Alaikum, Wa Alaikum Sam. Have you ever thought why your channels aren't being banned when you're speaking in favor of the Muslims? May they, by purpose, leaving you so they can gain uh, info from it. Uh, well, you'll have to ask them that question. That's not the question that I'm in a position to answer. Um, uh, I do know that I report the news. That's what I'm all about. That's what I've been about. Inshallah, that's what I'm going to continue to be about. Um, if they, uh, the powers that be, um, want to ban it, well, I don't own Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, so th that's up to them. They have their agenda, I have mine, and I'm pursuing my agenda, and I guess they'll have to pursue theirs. All right. Next. Abdullah says, Assalamu alaikum, Akhibillah, wa alaikum, Sam, Tariqatu. What are the headlines in Syria at the moment? Barakallahu feet. The reality is that the main headline here in Syria is the intense cold. It is below zero. Um, you've got situations where people are living in tents and it has been snowing, but it hasn't been the type of snow which is powdery. It's the type of snow that's heavy because it's, it's below zero, but sometimes it creeps up towards freezing and, the, and it turns to rain and that makes it heavy. And that's a serious situation for people who live in refugee camps. And, they're ta and, and if they're not on top of the job, I mean, constantly cleaning the, ro the, uh, the roofs of their tents, then the tents is going to collapse because it can't hold uh, uh, that kind of weight, meaning the snow plus the, the, the rain that goes along with it. And it just becomes one big block of ice on top of a tent and it collapses. And may Allah um, make it easy for them. I mean, it's a serious, serious situation. Right now, um, there's very little talk about battlefronts, very little talk um, um, about, uh, about anything else. Um, other crises um, have uh, been put on the back burner for right now. This is the main thing. People are suffering here. And that's the reality. And Allah knows best. Suso says, 
from a standpoint of al wala wal bara you have to support um is meaning uh this the group called the islamic state over sdf as the pkk communist mulhids um well some years ago i remember uh sheikh abu qatada uh, uh said he said that when the war was going on between Saddam Hussein and America, people came to him and they said, Sheikh, you're going to have to pick one or the other. You're either with America or you're with Saddam. There's no third option. And he said, what I'm going to say right now is, <laughs> do you think I'm a child wherein I could only choose to be with this one or to be with that one? I mean, wh why would you think that it boils down to only supporting the uh, the so-called Islamic State, which I don't see Islamic at all, or the SDF? I mean, why would I support the, the so-called Islamic State when they've killed thousands and were responsible for derailing much of the Syrian revolution? Why would I support people like that? And at the same time, the SDF, imprisoning men, women, and children for long periods of time in bad conditions um, with no opportunity uh, to free themselves. I mean, exactly why would I support something like that? I just couldn't. It would be unconscionable for me to support either one of them. That's, that's the reality of the situation and Allah knows best. Just simple question. You live in Azaz, don't you? Why didn't you mention the problem of electricity? Well, the main problem, which a lot of people are speaking about right now, is the severe and intense cold. Um, however, after having said that, there are many other problems that, that, that need to be addressed. One of the problems is the electricity. The situation here is very, very strange um, in some of these northern territories. For example, in Azaz. In Azaz, you've got a situation where you spend 100 Turkish lira and you get 100 kilos of electricity. Got that? Okay. But then, if you need additional electricity, because it's one of those pay-as-you-go deals, every time that if you want another 100 uh, kilos of electricity, you don't pay 100. You pay 230 Turkish lira. I know you're sitting there saying, wait a minute, this is supposed to be the other way around. You get more and the price goes down. No, you pay more, the price, you get more, the price goes up. And there have been protests um, and a lot of discontent. One of the problems that's going on here is that about 70% of the homes here in this part of uh, northern Syria, which is different from the Idlib areas, is that people uh, um, heat their homes by way of um electric heaters so if the electricity goes out you know what happens and it's very expensive um to to uh, uh for them to heat their homes um it's a big problem here and the 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 authorities here are supposed to be working on the issue uh we've got a cold snap but alhamdulillah the electricity is on in the homes i think that the electricity company um, has refrained from uh, cutting the electricity of those who have run out of credit. And for that, I would say that that's a, a very good thing. But we're going to have to see what the ultimate thing is going to be because uh, nighttime temperatures are due to be below zero for at least the next 10 days. Philip Dinga says... How do you feel about the Taliban and AQ abandoning the Uyghurs? I don't know of the Taliban and Al-Qaeda abandoning the Uyghurs. Can you uh, perhaps give us more information? Um, I don't know about that. Um, I mean, I've heard people say things, but I've got nothing uh, confirmed. Um, next. 
Sayyid Muawiyah says, Akhi, what about Indian and Pakistani brothers in Syria? They're here. They're here. Next, Suso says, has anyone solved the myth of who facilitated Baghdadi's hiding in Idlib? Uh, no, uh, that, that information hasn't come to light. Um, uh, we did some reporting on that um, after Abu Bakr Baghdadi was killed, but um, additional information hasn't surfaced um, as of yet. I don't have anything um, new to add to that. Okay, Zeem Q says, um, there's Indian people in Syria? Yes, there are. There are. Um, next, we've got, uh, Asalaamu Alaikum Bilal, Alaikum Sam. What do you think about the Nation of Islam? The Nation of Islam is a, a, uh, an organization that's known to me from my years of growing up in New York. We were very familiar with them and what they do and uh, their belief system. Um, they're not Muslims. Their, their belief system is, uh, is outside of Islam. Um, they could call themselves the Nation of Islam, but they're not Muslims and they don't belong to the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu They do not believe that th the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Muhammad was the final um, messenger. So that alone uh, puts them outside of the fold of Islam. Um, they have other belief systems that, uh, for example, that Master Farad Muhammad uh, came uh, to, you know, it, it's, it's a long story, but their belief system isn't consistent with that which the Prophet, the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, um, bought. All righty. Let's see what we have here. Uh, SNA says, it's rebels' fault why they engage in battles with ISIS instead of ISIS, um, instead of Assad regime wasting their weapons manpower. <laughs> That's a good question that I would ask ISIS. I was there when uh, rebel forces were trying to go to different battlefronts and they were getting ambushed by ISIS sleeper cells. That was happening. I remember some of the doctors were, were asking for brothers to do ribat around the hospital because ISIS cells were attacking the hospitals, the field hospitals, close to the front lines. Are you sure you have all your information? Um, next. Are you familiar with Abu Musab Suri and his uh, categoriz uh, categorization of the Taliban into three different groups? I believe the real Taliban died with Mullah Omar and Mullah Dadullah. May Allah have mercy on them. Amin, amin. Um, uh, of course, I am familiar with Abu Musab Suri, but I, look, I would like to say this. Um, let's give the Taliban an opportunity um, to either uh, prove that they are a real Islamic movement or not. Um, I think that with them being in power for three months or four months, um, I, we have to be realistic and give them an opportunity um, because we don't want to fall into the same trap that the Egyptians fell into um, when uh, Mohammed Morsi, may Allah have mercy on him, uh, became the president of Egypt. What did they do? People, after just a few short months of his presidency, keep in mind, it was ruled by Mubarak for almost 30 years, and then Anwar Sadat, and then uh, 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 Nasser. And so they'd been living in an unfair political situation for decades. And then just months into um, Morsi's reign, people are ready to overthrow him. And I was saying, I was in Syria, I was in Egypt at that time. I just said, take it easy. Give the man an opportunity to fulfill his promises and let's see what happens. No, 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 we have to have the change now. And they got it. They got Abdul, uh, Abdul Fattah Sisi. Now, 
in terms of your question, look, the Taliban inherited a broken country, a country that had been under uh, occupation for the last 20 years by the most powerful military in the world. In addition to that, their, um, th the financial situation there is in very bad condition. The uh, foreign aid, which is for the uh, Afghan people, um, has been cut off. But that's not very important to the international community because it doesn't affect them. So they use it as a political tool. So I would say give them an opportunity to fulfill their promises, their Islamic promises, their Islamic duty. If they fail to do that, then we can hold them to account for it. But up until that time, I say give the brothers a chance. Uh, okay, next. We've got Salaam Alaikum, Brother Bilal. Walaikum Salaam. How is the situation of the Syrian people now? What about HTS? Um, are they stopping arresting the Muhajireen? Um, nothing has really changed all of that much. Um, um, uh, many of the Muhajireen, as well as the Syrian people, continue to live in fear. Um, there is um, th there are threats by Hayat Tahrir Sham to execute um, a group um, from uh, Tel Ada, um, which is not too far from Dar al Izza, um, in these uh, northern territories, for um, for fighting against them. Um, and there have been protests in that regard. Um, there have been a lot of people starting to raise their voice about um, prisoners' rights and such like that. And I don't see that stopping anytime soon because Abu Muhammad Jolani hasn't shown any indication that he's willing to deal with the Syrian people or the Muhajireen who sincerely came to help them uh, fairly. And Allah knows best. Um, let's take a look and see what's next. Okay, next up, we've got rebels block the front line between ISIS and Assad regime in Syria desert, creating buffer between ISIS and Assad regime. This is the most foolish act. Rebels didn't create the buffer. Um, uh, 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 the Assad would have fallen. I mean, the person who's sending that SNA, they obviously have no information. I don't know where you got that from. Um, those battlefronts that were um, where ISIS uh, was, I was there, I visited them, I reported from some of those areas, and what you're saying is just not accurate, brother. Let me just give it to you straight. Um, All righty, let's see. Um, all right, let's see what we've got here. Next. Hey, you know me. Are you committed to democracy in Syria? No. Please denounce Jolani. I denounce him. Good enough? Next. Um, let's see. Next up, Hamza Shaheen. Aki Bilal, is there any alternative to Hayat Tahrir Sham? How do you see the future for the Muhajirin wanting <coughs> to join the jihad in Syria? Uh, currently, what the situation is, for example, if someone were to say, um, is there an alternative to the U.S. government in America? Well, that's not the real question, is it? The question is reform. That's what the question is. So we don't say, well, if there's no alternative to the America, American government, then we should just leave them to do what they want to do. It doesn't work like that. Once again, these are not the choices that mature people um, need to limit themselves to either this option or that option. Look, um, uh, I don't see that there's any reason why Hayat Tahrir Sham can't make reforms. Why can't they stop dealing unjustly um, with the uh, Syrian people? 
people whom the animal had you eat, whom they arrest. Why can't they do it like they promised? Why not? Why does it have to be a situation um, where we have to say, and I'm not saying you're necessarily saying this, but from the way the question is worded, I'm, I'm feeling like it's a thing where is there an alternative to Haitz Tahrir Shem? If there isn't, then leave them in place. Or your question could mean, um, is there a viable alternative to them right now? I say that the people need to force Haitz Tahrir Shem to make concessions. This is what I see, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And were that to happen, then that would create um, uh, 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 a lot of good for a lot of people to come to help the Syrian people just as they did some years ago. However, Haidz Tahrir Sham is arresting people for coming in uh, uh, now when at one time they were calling for them to come in. It's crazy, but it is what it is. Okay. All righty, let's see. OJ, what do you think is the future of Haidz Tahrir Sham? Are they growing or will other factions kick them out? I don't think other factions will kick them out. And I don't see that they're necessarily growing. But what I do think is that within a year, the Syrian people will overthrow um, because I just don't think that the Syrian people are going to be willing to go back into um, uh, another situation uh, where they're oppressed, tortured, indefinitely detained, and such like that. So I would say that within a year, Hayat Tahrir Sham will be overthrown, not by another group, but by, by the Syrian people. And Allah knows best. Um, let's see. Proto, who says, what could be the effect on Syria when Russia um, would invade the Ukraine? Well, the first question is, is Russia going to invade the Ukraine? Well, if you look at the rhetoric, it would certainly look like the rhetoric is being ratcheted up. The, uh, the Ukraine, I'm sorry, Russia, um, in the negotiations with the West, uh, seem to be hardening their stances. They are saying that, um, well, number one, we want assurances and guarantees that uh, that there will be no NATO bases in former Soviet uh, uh, Union uh, countries. Well, then that includes the Ukraine, uh, Belarus, um, uh, Kazakhstan, um, and all of those countries that were former Soviet uh, uh, states. Mm. Um, <laughs> NATO's not going to do that. No way are they going to do that, uh, to, to make that kind of guarantee. Uh, but it's going to be hard for Russia to back down because they don't want NATO bases on their borders. So now it's going to come down to a thing of who's going to want it more. Is Russia going to want to protect their what they see as their sovereignty, which it really isn't because Ukraine is a sovereign country. They can invite the NATO forces or the Mickey Mouse forces or anybody for forces that they want because they're not Russia the Ukrainian position. However, Russia is saying, nah, man, it ain't like that. Y'all are too close to our country and we don't want NATO uh, forces on our border. And we're willing to make trouble if you don't want to listen. So the Ukrainians are saying, hey, Wes, can you come and help us out? And $200 million in uh, military equipment um, was delivered to the Ukraine um, just a couple of days ago. So it's, um, it, it's, a, it's a serious time. Um, another country that you're going to have to keep in your eye on is Germany. They're a part of, uh, of the whole uh, NATO situation. Um, are they going to toe the line? They've got something invested in that runs from Russian uh, territory into Germany, where they would make a lot of money by distributing Russian gas into Eastern Europe. Uh, so they've got a stake in that, too. So uh, there are a lot of wild cards here. Um, now, after having said all of that, um, a protracted uh, war in the Ukraine would weaken Russia severely, and it could force them, if it was a protracted affair, to withdraw from these territories um, if they were not able to maintain it. Now, what do I mean? Number one is that were they to invade the Ukraine, the um, uh, the White House 
and its allies have made it very clear that they're going to hit Russia uh, uh, economically. That will sting. Two, they will also have to maintain troop levels if they're going to get into a protracted war in the Ukraine. That's another thing. So if they're going to have to pull valuable resources, manpower, financial power, that could affect what's going on in um, uh, here uh, in Syria, and Allah knows best. Okay, let's see. Um, okay. Um, well, we've got a thing here. Said Muawiya says, why do not rebels negotiate and de-radicalize ISIS? You know how to de-radicalize ISIS? Islamic knowledge. And I know many ISIS members, and we tried hard to get them to come to Aqidah classes and such like that, but they were not interested in coming. It's not that they wanted to argue. They weren't interested in coming. Most of those guys, and I know them personally, they don't have Islamic knowledge. They have Islamic zeal, but they don't have Islamic knowledge. And that's what sank them. And that's, that, 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 that's for real. So you want to talk about de-radicalization? Look, if somebody is sick and they refuse the cure, what can you do for them? What can you do? Um, okay. Uh, let's take one or two more. Let's see. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, we've got here. A.H.L. Idrisi says, I would like your analysis on the state of the Saudis authority in the region, given the recent Houthi attacks on the UAE. Is Saudi authority, uh, Saudi Arabian authority eroding along with the UAE? Do you expect a popular movement in these states? <coughs> okay, um, I don't expect a movement um, either in Saudi Arabia or the United Arab Emirates anytime soon. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing, uh, it's very clear that the Houthis have upped their military gain, their military uh, gain. It's very clear that the Iranians um, are helping them in a, in a big way because they were able to strike from Yemen all the way to the United Arab Emirates. They've never been able to do that. Um, there were about three deaths um, in, uh, not far from the uh, Abu Dhabi airport. Um, that's being uh, uh, worked on out there. And that's huge. That's significant. Why? Because now they have an opportunity to strike um, the United Arab Emirates on their home, uh, their home turf. That changes the calculus a bit. Because before, the only thing that the Houthis were able to do is to defend, not to launch attacks. And therefore, the politics of the United Arab Emirates reflected that dynamic. Now that they are able to attack the United Arab Emirates, just like they've been doing in Saudi Arabia, um, by use of drone warfare, well, now that's going to have to change things a little bit. Because if they can sustain those attacks, the United Arab Emirates is not ready for that. I, and, I, I, and I know that very well. They're not ready for that type of attack. Now, some people would sit there and say, well, wait a minute, Bilal, you're a Sunni Muslim. The United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia are Sunni Muslims. Why does it seem like you're going for the, uh, the Iranian Shia-backed uh, uh, Houthis against the Sunni Muslims, Yibidal? Yeah, what about that? Well, look, um, this is not a religious war. It's not. Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates have been fighting against um, uh, 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 different streams of Islamic uh, uh, activism. They're known for doing that. That's for real. And Mohammed bin Salman is the absolute worst, right along with the Nehyan family in the United Arab Emirates. So um, just to once again say, well, you're either with the Sunnis or you're with the Shia. 
Well, neither one of them are implementing anything of their religion, period. So I'm not for this, this one, and I'm not for that one. I'm reporting the news. I'm telling you the way that it actually is. And neither side is implementing anything vaguely re re resembling the Shia uh, uh, methodology or the Sunni methodology. So if you want to choose somebody for nostalgic purposes or just to say, yeah, the Sunnis, they're the, they're the Mujahideen um, out there in, in Saudi Arabia, they're not. And neither are the Houthis. We'll take one last question. Um, well, let's see this one right here. Uh, Sharif Awad says, Salam, brother, when will your book be published? Can't wait to read it. Um, well, I'm still uh, negotiating and talking to different publishers. So hopefully I'll find, um, settle on one soon. Or I might self-publish. If anybody out there has got experience with that, maybe message me because I'd like to know more about a personal experience. Now, uh, last question. Um, okay, well, let's take this one. Um, Israr al Haq, why is H2S arresting people? What is their rationale? Um, uh, uh, well, their public rationale is that they say that this one is a part of ISIS or that one is a part of the uh, Western-backed forces. That's the public rationale that they give. Being that they don't give people trials, um, due process, opportunities to defend themselves, um, they basically arrest them, uh, torture them, beat the heck out of them, and then um, they call that justice. The reality is what they're doing is that they just wanna hold on to power and they'll do it any way that they possibly can. All of that talk about Islamic governance and such like that, you really don't hear it that much anymore. And, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. All right, um, we're going to leave it there. Um, we want to thank everybody for joining us. If you'd like to help us out and financially, we could really use it. we got some special things coming up in the next couple of days. Um, please do contact me either on Facebook or on uh, Twitter. And I can guide you to help how you can help us out either through Bitcoin or by way of our uh, bank account uh, for OGN. I am Bilal Abdul Karim. Jazakum Allah khaira. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.